Hey guys, welcome back to the Calibrate Tools channel. Sometimes those sprinkler systems start acting up on us and we got to do an overhaul. And that's what we're going to tackle today. So stick around and I'll see you right after this. Okay, here we're working on a sprinkler system overhaul. And we had to take out the old sprinkler manifold. The timers weren't working properly, so we decided to replace them. We also raised the height of the timers from where they were on the last manifold, on the old manifold. We did that because the yard was sloping up at an incline from the old system. And as a result, some of the sprinkler heads in the yard were higher than the timers. Now that's very important to know. A sprinkler head should be lower than the timer because if they're higher, that can cause problems with water flow and pressure distribution throughout the system. When a sprinkler head's higher, it can lead to uneven watering, bad drainage, because the water has to travel uphill from the manifold to reach the sprinkler head. So you wanna keep those sprinkler heads lower than the timers to keep that water pressure consistent and to make sure that water reaches the farthest sprinkler head. So that's how it works with the gravity fed sprinkler system. So make sure you keep the sprinkler heads lower than the timers. And that's what we're doing here today. We're raising up the sprinkler heads a little higher than they were before to solve some of the issues that was happening with the sprinkler system. Now the sprinkler manifold may have been installed at the right height, meaning that the timers were at the right height initially, but there's a few things that could have happened to make the timers lower over time or sink into the ground is what I'm saying. One of them is soil erosion. The soil around the timer or the manifold because of water runoff can start to erode and cause the system to sink into the ground or even tilt. Then there's the natural settling of the ground over time. That's why you have to make sure that when you do install it, you have to compact that soil around the system so this won't happen or at least won't happen as quickly. Then there's water leaks from other sprinkler lines that can cause the soil to be oversaturated and cause the system to sink as well. Bad installation is another reason, especially if it wasn't installed on a stable base. The weight of the system or if it's a control box can be too heavy for an unstable base to support. If you live in colder climates, this can have an effect on the soil underneath your system because it's freezing up, then it's thawing out, freezing up, thawing out, and that can throw off the placement of the sprinkler system. So you definitely want to stabilize the base. If you got some compacted gravel to put around the system, if you got a concrete slab, you can use that. Try not to install it in an area where water accumulates. Always inspect for leaks. And then if you have to, recompact the soil periodically. And you can even use gravel to give you additional support as well. So as you can see, guys, we always try to perform what's called a fit check when installing, in this case, a sprinkler manifold. But this can be for anything involving installing piping or PVC. It's also called dry fitting, and it's a very important step. It'll save you time, it'll make sure everything's precise, and you'll definitely avoid mistakes this way. Dry fitting allows you to make sure that all the components of the manifold and the piping align correctly so that you won't have any gaps or things that are offset by mistake. It makes it easier to adjust the position of the pipes and the fittings before you permanently bond them with glue or cement. Because once you apply the glue, you won't be able to adjust anything. It's permanently bonded. So dry fitting, make sure that everything's perfect before you do this. And make sure that you catch any errors or mistakes or incorrect pipe lengths, incompatible parts, or wrong fittings are caught in time. Dry fitting also helps you to mark the pipes and the fittings to make sure that they're at the proper depth when you do decide to put the glue on. It just reduces the stress of the overall installation. It allows you to customize your fit, making sure that the system will fit into the designated space that you chose without a problem. Dry fitting helps you to minimize leaks, it helps you to verify the different parts of the system, like the valves and the unions that may need to be replaced later on and it forces you to visualize how water will flow through the system correctly. So a basic breakdown of what you'll need for a job like this as far as tools and materials is number one, PVC pipes and the fittings that go with them. Talking about the elbows, T-joints, and couplings. Now PVC pipe used in a house sprinkler system like this is usually between a half inch and two inches in diameter, but all that depends on the system's capacity. We're not trying to irrigate acres of land here like a crop field, even though some of you guys may have that. In cases like that, you'll probably need three quarters of an inch thick piping. Pipes are designated in schedules. 
So they have Schedule 40 and they have Schedule 80. Schedule 40 is more of a standard strength pipe and Schedule 80 is a little bit stronger, which means Schedule 40 is a little bit cheaper. But that's what you want to use for basic home applications. Schedule 80 is what's considered industrial strength piping. You're going to need sprinkler valves if you got to replace those. They're usually about an inch or three quarters of an inch. Then you're going to need your PVC primer and cement, which you see being used here a lot, I might add. Then you're going to need some Teflon tape or pipe thread sealant. Then if you got to replace your valve box, you're going to need that. A valve box just protects the valves from dirt and debris getting into them. Then you're going to need a pipe cutter or some kind of saw. In this case, he's using a angle grinder and even a sawzall or reciprocating saw at times, which makes it much quicker than a pipe cutter to cut that PVC. Then a tape measure, something to mark your pipes with, like a marker, and then finally a shovel if you got a date, which in most cases you have to. In the next one, we're going to tackle those sprinkler heads to see if they're working properly. Guys, I appreciate you checking this video out. If you like it, hit that like and subscribe. Check out the links below, and I'll see you in the next one.